Well, folks, uh, Bruce here from the Coasters Club, and uh, as you know, we're doing a series on ordinary people living ordinary lives, ordinary coasters, but people who have got extraordinary stories. And today, I'm with uh, Richard Simpson. Richard, uh, thanks so much for taking the time to, to talk to us. Thank, really, you, thank you for the opportunity. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I have no idea what's going to happen. No, no, no. Well, look, don't be nervous. Now, look, uh, what's your full name? Richard Colin Simpson. Colin came from, that was my mother's requirement, apparently, when I was born, that her brother was to be in there somewhere. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Now, listen, whereabouts were you born? Palmerston North. Oh, the city. Yeah. The city yeah. of Palmerston yeah. North. Um, who were your mum and dad? Who were my mum and dad? Well, my dad continues to exist. He lives in Paraparam. And, um, and what was his name? He what was is Richard his... too. Well, yeah. he is a Richard. Yeah. Right. As was his father. And as was his father. Oh, goodness me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you've got to... Uh... Well, I'm the fourth. Yeah. He's the third. So you're, you're uh, Richard Simpson, the fourth. Fourth, that's I love right. It. I love it. When, uh, when you came home from the home, after you were born, where was your first home? A Hakia. Orange and AF base Ahakia, they were no, no, Orange and AF base station, Orange and AF station Ahakia, they were no stations in those days. And were you living on the base or just in the... In uh, the... No, we were on the base. In fact, the, the house that we lived in, I don't know if it's still there or not, but um, it was it was there up until 20 years ago. Um, it was right on the edge of the tarmac. Oh, he's joking. Yeah, oh. yeah. yeah. Oh, my, dad, my dad was um, the YMCA secretary at um, Ahakia at that time. Yeah. Oh, it, it, very and my grandfather was the station warrant officer. I see. From a uh, Air Force background, almost. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, now look, um, when when you were when you were growing up, um, what did your family do? I like to think I'm still doing that. Of course, it's early stages, but. Well, what did you do as kids to have fun? Is it, we look around now, we, we talk to the, the various kids and we watch some of them having fun in a different way than perhaps I used to. What, what did you do? Living on an Air Force base had its own privileges and um, you know, my friends, their, their, their fathers were pilots and navigators. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> and we had some lovely bush areas that we used to use for recreation and, um, and just, you know, general kids playing in. And we used to grab the leaves of the, of the branch of a cabbage tree and slide down hills. Yep. And have races. Yeah. That was a bit of fun. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. Do, do you, uh, did you meet your grandparents? Oh, yes. All four of them. Oh, that's very unusual. Uh, the th three of them have died in the time that I've lived in Hakataka. Um, you, you're the first uh, person I've had a chat to that has met all four of their I grandparents. I've met my great grandmother on my father's side. Do you recall anything that uh, your grandparents said or that your great uh, grandmother said that that sort of stuck with you? No, not 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 like that. But um, I do have. Something that I have something in the, a drawer in, in the room, the other room that I cherish that came from my great grandmother. Um, I mean, if you're if you're looking at life's advice for life's journey, no, no. So, no. what uh, when you when you were uh, young, were there any books that you liked to read? Biggles. Biggles. Yeah, of course. I read them all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> where where else did you? Uh, Whereabouts you, did you attend primary school? Uh, Karori. Whereabouts is that? It's the suburb of Wellington. It's where the important people live. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I, in Patea, in the Taranaki. And um, it was primary school. And then intermediate in Palmerston North. And then Palmerston North Boys High. Mm. So at university was... The university was Wellington Polytechnic in those days. Right. Now Massey University it was Wellington Polytechnic. And, and what did you chase initially at, uh, at the Polytech? Oh, I, well, I, I, um, I ended up with a, a job with the Blenheim Borough Council as a cadet health inspector. And the training was done through environmental, um, environmental studies at the Polytechnic. 
Okay. When you were at school, any sport activities that you got involved in? Oh, was nothing it? that I'd be particularly proud of. Oh, most of us. <laughs> keep in mind, most of us were like that. <laughs> oh, well, there was a wrong shaped ball for one for, for a couple of seasons. <laughs> uh, I stood in the goal. Did you play uh, soccer? Yeah, for a couple of years. I did too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, of course, nobody but else. I was, I was never much good. I'm, I'm, I'm essentially a sports free zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. Yeah. The, uh, um, look, any long conversation about sport was that you've chosen the wrong person to talk to. Well, it, it, look, uh, I can tell you that uh, it, when I went to school, if you played soccer, which I did, it was only because you weren't good enough to play rugby. <laughs> well, certainly got that one right, in my case. <laughs> if, uh, if you had a close friend uh, back when you were at school, yeah. how would he have described you? You know, were you, were you uh, outward looking, inward looking, were you quiet, were you uh, a party animal, you know? No, 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 no. What no. was Richard Simpson at school? And you have to be careful here because what I've found with these interviews is that... They go a bit further. <laughs> pe there's people all around who know you that yeah, actually yeah, go, yeah, yeah. well, hang That's on a minute, <laughs> I, I believe you're a party animal. <laughs> exactly. No, no, no. Um, That's a gee, that's an interesting question. I, I, I um, just an ordinary boy who managed to get himself into a bit of trouble every now and then. Yeah. Well, there we go, folks. Now, when did you uh, when did you first arrive on the coast? Fourteenth of November, nineteen seventy-seven. Is that approximately? <laughs> well, it is actually because it was the thirteenth. <laughs> it was fourteenth is when I started with the was with the Western County. Oh, so Monday, the 14th of November, 1977. Yeah, it's nearly 41 years ago. Time flies, doesn't it, when you're having fun? Does. Now tell me, when did you start dating as a young man? Um, that was in Blenheim. How old were you? Just roughly. 19. About 19. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember your first date? That's, we won't go into it. I no, just no, wonder no. whether you remembered it. I'm not wanting the outcome or anything. So. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, when did you meet uh, Yvonne? Oh, in Bedham in 1975. 75? Yeah, about 75, I, and, I suspect. And do you remember your first... Well, I mean, my, my mum and dad, uh, my dad was in the Air Force. He was at Woodburn. And he got a posting to Singapore. So I lived at home. And uh, there was no way I could go to Singapore with them. So I had to find accommodation, and Marlborough Express had a, an advertisement one night looking for housemasters at the Innes House Hostel for the Marlborough, Marlborough Colleges Board. Right. And so I applied. I thought, that's pretty good, get three good meals a day, a bed and a shower, that'll be right. Yeah. And it was. And, um, you know, we've got friends from those days, as long as I've got friends from those days that um, are still very much on our list. Do you, uh, do you remember... Yvonne, Yvonne was a housemistress there. Oh, is it where they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's where yeah. we met. That's where we met. Do you remember your first date with uh, Yvonne? Probably, yeah. That's that's a good sign. Yeah. And how long did you know before you got married? Well, a couple of two and a half years, probably. Okay. How many children do you have? Two. Claire and Craig. Fantastic. Yeah. Claire Claire graduates in December. AUT in Auckland, he's an occupational therapist, and Craig is a musician, the Royal New Zealand Navy, Chief Petty Officer Simpson is the drum major for the Navy band, yeah. Amazing the things that you find out when you, when you actually sit down and have a chat, isn't it? Don't you reckon? Well, we're, we're very proud of We're very proud of them both, yeah. During, during your life, you've seen uh, lots of changes. Is there one invention that you can think of where you, where you can say, wow, that, that, that really has changed? Oh, PC, the... of course. Yeah. I mean, gosh. <laughs> I think back to the olden days at the council, at the county. Gosh, it was. There on Jennifer Ross used to type up all the rates demands every year. Oh, e every what? individual one? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then we got a county clerk by the name of Ian Freighter who decided that we needed a computer. 
and um, that changed things significantly. Gosh, and and wasn't the uh, wasn't the staggering thing about uh, the way the office ladies typed was they never made a mistake. They didn't make a mistake, and they never saw their hands. I mean, they did it. Yeah, they it's just did it in a blur. Um, and there's a young lady down at the district council at the moment, Diane Maitland, who she is probably one of the most remarkable people that I have ever seen behind a keyboard. She knows what I'm going to say. She's got it typed before I've said it. Yeah, it's very, yeah, yeah, well, she's, she's amazing. Yeah, she is, she's a huge yeah. asset. She's a huge asset. And I'm hoping that she'll live to about 150 and, yeah. we, can, and we can keep her working that long. And I can tell you what, the interview with her will be a good one too. <laughs> It'll be... Except that she's so discreet, she won't tell you anything. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It'll just be that smile. That's right. And, <laughs> now, was, did you meet uh, anyone in your life that that uh, changed the way you thought about things? Oh, changed. definitely, definitely, definitely. Who was that? Oh, well, there's several. I mean, uh, there are some amazing people that I have met in this, in, the, in this, in this, uh, in this district. Uh, Morris Roberts, John Olson, Mick Sullivan. Yeah. Mick Sullivan was a wise man, wasn't he? He was a very wise man. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And did you work with, with him for long? Well, he was the county chairman almost the entire time that I was with the county. I know Durham did take over. Durham Havel took over towards the end of the 80s, that's right. And, and uh, when you look around Hagatika and you look at the things that Morris Roberts was involved in that got going. Oh, it's it, extraordinary. It, Bruce, yeah, yeah, uh, no, I, the guy, uh, he was a mover and a shaker. He was. Yes, he was. And um, We look at a medical centre, we look at the, the pensioner housing, we look at, and there's probably dozens of things that, you know, I don't have uh, have any idea on. And, and he's, uh, Morris Roberts. Was, and it gets even better when you go down south. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it does. <laughs> it's, so, if you had to pick a, the best age of your life so far, and, and let's assume that you're sort of halfway through it, yeah. Um, what, what would you, is there an age where you'd say, well, actually, that was that's pretty cool. Yeah, probably forty to fifty-five. Yes, interesting, and isn't I, it? I mean, being down at district council in nineteen eighty-nine when it was formed, yep, and working with John Olson and Robin Reeves and Rob Daniel was unbelievably exciting. I mean, um, we sort of knew what we had to do, but nobody actually knew how to do it. But we did it. And, and that was when, why, why is 1989? That's when the, count, the district council came into being. And so they merged the county council. That was the end of the county, the end of the borough. Yeah, that's right. We had a brand new entity. Starting from scratch. Starting from scratch. And no, no rules. No precedents. No. <laughs> The, so, if you were if you were looking at uh, your work experience now, mm -hmm. and and thinking about the people that uh, you, you've worked with, mm -hmm. the the Westland District Council clearly, and, and the Westland District clearly owes you a debt of gratitude, and you you probably don't feel that, but I certainly don't. Uh, I mean, I well, you, I owe the district the, the gratitude. I mean, well, I think it's, it's just been it's been. I mean, I, every now and then I'd head, head across that Hagadigga River Bridge into South Western and I'd always think, well, this is going to be a bit of an adventure. And what's more, somebody's going to pay me next Wednesday for it. That's it. Right. And it keeps happening. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it was, you know, 41 years is a long time. 41 years is a long time. It's um, 38 years longer than what I anticipated. So when you started, who were the guys you worked with when you first turned? You worked for the county first of all? I worked for the county. And and who, who was there? Who, there was who? John Olson and Murray Fleming, Murray Roberts and Kevin Grofsky. Um, Mark, Mark Freitas, gosh. He's a great guy. And then of course in those days we had close contact with all the all the work staff out of Canary. Oh of course they were part and of... Gilbert Kelly and Alistair... Alistair um, Alistair Manson, Les, um, Les Mitchell, the you know, I'd, Bridge Gang. And the, uh, uh, look, I've, I've often heard that the uh, the Bridge Gang that you were part of the team with uh, were building, were both designing the bridge, building the bridge, and moving on to the next one on almost a constant basis. That is perhaps, a, I, look, I, I, 
th th these are the men in my life. These yes. Are, yeah. I mean, how they how they read about things is always a mystery to me, and I know that um, it was probably a mystery to John Olson on occasions, but it all happened. Well, do you know that none of the bridges have fallen down? Uh, I remember being with Kevin Grofsky at one stage. We were out at Canary looking at something, and we were dealing with the late Cyril Crom. And Cyril explained something, and Kevin said something to me like, "It's just wonderful working with these people. You know, you can rely on them." Wow, no, yeah. no, they, you know, there's a there's a compliment. Yeah. So you, you're working with uh, in those early days. Then you come to 1989, where the uh, the merger occurred. Certainly did. And so John Olson, you would have taken John with you, or he would have taken you. He took me with me. Yeah. I mean, um, always been deep gratitude to him. He he appointed me to the the new position. And he he was um, he was one of the last of what I consider to be the common sense, hands-on, hands on, feet on the ground Look, leaders. He was an amazing guy. He um, had a wonderful sense of humour. Um, he was a master at the double, the double entendre. Um, what does that mean? And he, what is a double A double entendre? Yeah, what's, what is that? Literally the double entendre, uh, the double meaning. Oh, gotcha, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, Look, look I, the first time, within within a couple of days of the first meeting I ever had with him, mm. every time I met him from there on, it was, and uh, how are you, uh, Ali Barber? <laughs> Ali Barber. And yeah. he called me Ali Barber till the, till the day before he died. And when he died, he did it in, in such style. <laughs> yes, he did. He went out very quickly. Uh, Chris Cuff was here on the Monday morning and told us, and it was amazing. It was, but you know, another. So, who else did you work with, Bernie Derrick? No, Bernie had gone. And so it's before, yeah, 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 yeah. right? And then from a um, certainly, I knew Bernie. Yvonne and I lived in his house for a while. Oh, in, in uh, Park Street, Tudor Street, yeah, Tudor Street, yeah, just okay, there, yeah. Ah, yeah. mm. oh, dear, dear. And so then, when you when you worked, obviously you were at an operational level throughout your life. Mm. Did you tell me about some of the governance? Uh, um, uh, people that pass through you because governance I mean, people come and go well, operationally. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember when I when I finished with the council, we had a bit of a. Oh, it was at Christmas time five years ago. And we had a bit of a, a do at the golf club, and I said at that time, you know, that has been one of the major pleasures is meeting the councillors and dealing with the councillors, the governance people. I mean, all of them have been just wonderful people. People of men and women of, of vision and talent, and I think of the dozens and dozens of councillors that I have dealt with. I think over the years there may possibly have been two that were there for something other than the public good. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's on, a, on two occasions, you know. Yeah, yeah. in forty-one years. In forty-one years. Yeah, yeah. How did you get on with the guys in South Westland? Because they, they truly are different to the rest of the world. There are some memorable, uh, memorable um, moments. I think probably one of the best days of my life was leaving here. I had the council car. I picked up Nelson Cook, Councillor Nelson Cook. And we went down to Friends. We picked up Ralph Fagan. And we picked up, oh no, that's right, we had Heather. Heather um, Kelly. No, 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 no. Her surname has just escaped me. Yep. Was she a councillor? Yes, yeah, she was a councillor. Her husband worked for Doc. Trevor. No, can't think of it. Sorry. So you headed south? Heather Bryant. Heather Bryant? Oh, okay. Yeah, Heather Bryant and um, Nelson Cook, and then we picked up Ralph Fagan, and then we picked up Tony Condon. At Peringa, and it was a remarkable day. It was, it was fun. We called in, and we, we did things that we had no intention of doing. We called in to see things and people that we had no intention of doing. But it was just a great day out. What a wonderful group of people to have in a car. Condon. So, Richard, did you ever go to Quitcher Town? Oh yes. What? Where did? How did? Where did that come about? Oh, from that goes way back before my time. But it's. I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know what it's. Heritage is. It says 1968 on a sign down there. Does it? And, right. uh, 
But every time I go in there, I feel that it's... I must just... say, uh, probably Eileen Nolan did tell me what its history was, but I've forgotten. It went in one ear and out the other. I and who were the characters that you met in South Westland that, that you, you know, you would always... Uh... Tony Condon was the first one. I, yep. met him, I met him on the 15th of November, 1977. Right. Yep. And why, why was Tony special? Well, he just was. I mean, <laughs> an extraordinary man, man. <laughs> Funny man, serious. And he had dirtied his hands on everything. Yeah. I mean, he knew stuff. Caught a lot of white bait in this time too, just quietly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What about Kerry Eagley? Oh, well, I mean, Kerry, Kerry, gosh, I hold him in high esteem. What a hard-working man of vision and, and just passionate. Yeah, he's passionate. The guy's passionate. He's a real southwestern man, isn't he? Oh, he's wonderful. And um, what about John Birchfield? Oh, solid. Solid abs, yeah. And that's the thing that I've noticed about... Uh, those older families That's in right. South Western, they, right. you know, they'll give you anything. You don't want to cross them, because if you do, it's, you, you've been in a bad place forever. But if you treat them right and you're honest and you're straight up and down, yeah. um, they're, quite, they're just quite loyal. It was, it, it, it was a whole new dynamic when Kerry Eggling joined that council. I mean, when he spoke, everybody listened. He's a, he's, a, he's a big man as well. He's got a big voice. He's got a big, a big man with a big voice and, uh, and you know, he's, he's been around. So, I mean, I've had hospitality at his place. Gosh, he's been kind. I remember I had a planning consultant with us at one stage. And we called him to see him over something and um, it was a bit of an eye-opener for our planning consultant anyway. <laughs> So, you know, one of the most remarkable people I met, work-wise, was um, Jerry McSweeney. Well, that's interesting. What he, what he did at Meraki was quite extraordinary. Yeah. And it, it, he turned it into something that was very different. Hmm. Very, very successful. The formula, you know, the yeah. formula he uses is, yeah. is successful. And he's a he's a very genuine man. Oh, he's knowledgeable. Guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Now, do you recall? I was talking to someone the other day about uh, it was actually old Jimmy Grant, and he was telling me about driving a bulldozer down and hauling a big uh, boulder out of Martin's Bay. Did oh, that yes. happen in your time? Yes, it did. And but I've never associated with it. That must have been an adventure and a half for them. Yeah, yeah I would imagine. So, I did take a Fordson tractor into the Cascade once. I, I was oh, just a young health inspector. I was down there and I called in to see the work staff pushing that, um, pushing that road through. Yeah. And I said to Alistair Manson, can I go to the end? Would you take me through to the end? He said, I haven't got time. He said, we're far too busy. He said, see that tractor? He said, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> so I took the old Ford, the blue Fordson tractor. All the way to the Cascade? All the way down, yeah, yeah, through. To the end of the road and then across the paddocks to the Cascade. Yeah. It's beautiful in there, isn't it? It's mammoth country. Yeah. Mammoth. It's, yeah. it's yeah, yeah. Yeah, quite staggering. So, Richard, um, you were very young to retire. What have you got planned next? Um, well, am I very young to retire? Well, you certainly well, I don't actually like that word, retire. I don't consider myself to be retired. I'm no longer in the full time workforce. Yep. I've still got plenty of things to do. Um, and as you know, I'm, I've still got a little finger in the pie at the district council. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'm and very uh, happy with that as the uh, as the alcohol hearings commissioner. And I did I did see a report where it said that uh, uh, during the year we have appointed a new commissioner, which is yourself, and that his he takes a, a different he has a different style to the last one. And I I must say that I grinned when I read it and thought, yes, you have got a different style uh, and it's appreciated by all. Lovely, thank you. <laughs> it's absolutely appreciated. Well, is there anything else you'd like to add into it? Anything that you can, uh, that you'd like me to add in? It's, it's, a, it's only a very short chat, but yeah. um, 
it's always good to catch someone when they're in, you know, in good neck like you are. I mean, you, you walk more miles than probably Holly Robinson. Uh, that certainly happened, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been into some interesting places. And, um, I, I, look, every now and then, Alan Stoby and I are talking about the, the people that we have come across in our background. Yep. You know, the Harry Thompsons and the Cess Prestons of this world, wonderful men. And we sort of look at each other in horror that we may well be the, 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 the modern age equivalent. Well, I That's a high standard to meet. Well, I, a very really high standard to I meet. hate to tell you, but uh, you're, you're already there. Oh, dear. You yeah. just probably haven't noticed it. <laughs> it's, um, it because, I, look, like you, uh, in, the, in the 70s there, we had, we had Paul Renton and we yes, had Mr. Yes. Black and we had... Uh, young Jack Renton and we had Mr. Preston and we had we had two Mr. Prestons. We did. Well there were three Mr. Prestons really. Three Mr. Prestons yeah, yeah. and Mr. Stopforth. Yeah. And and they were all my recollection anyway was they were all men of integrity. Exactly, exactly. You know no, it's and, and they were they were they were delightful company. Um and they knew stuff. They knew stuff. Well I think they were they were at that age where they've been around a wee while and perhaps, uh, yeah, yeah. That, that, perhaps that's what it was. And so, you know, I looked up to those people and I thought, well, oh, uh, they're, they're quite gone now. And I mean, and I look around at that age group and, ooh, that's scary. <laughs> well, you and I are lucky because we, we you know, we've, um, we're only halfway through. We will be, can you imagine what it would be like as, say, 95 year olds? It'd be awesome. Come on, Jenny will kill me. She will. <laughs> she won't be able to put up with me. Well, look, Richard, thank, thank you uh, so much for taking the time to, to chat oh, with us. To, to all those if coasters. I think it's something that we should have talked about, I'll give you a call. I know you will do. And, and to all those coasters out there, and at the moment, uh, these videos are being watched by around 175,000 people every seven days. Uh, a copy of this will, will go to the museum, and a copy of this will go onto our YouTube channel. So to all of you out there, if you type in Richard Simpson, a coaster, for the next 100 years, this interview will come up. Thank you very much, Richard. Really appreciate it. Very, very kind.